it's the last episode for the year 2023. Welcome to our viewers in Nigeria and across the world. Lunchtime politics begins right now. Well, we'll begin with uh, politics in Edo State, and it appears that the crisis in the state's Labour Party was taken a rather violent dimension after some members of the Lamidi Akwapa group in the party were attacked. Well, in the video, which has been gaining traction online, the attackers can be heard challenging two men uh, who were victims, of course, of that beating, and they were challenging them for coming into Benin City, the Edo State capital. The two men who were beaten to a pulp are said to be in the state ahead of the Lamidi Apagwa Group's convention, which is scheduled for tomorrow, Saturday, December the 30th. We know the spokesperson of the Akwakwa-led faction of the Labour Party in a conversation with Channels Television has accused the Edo State Publicity Secretary, Mr. Sam Murugba, of spearheading the attack. Uh, he alleges that the leaders were beaten up and malhandled when they went to prepare for the event. And he also accused the party's governorship aspirant, Mr. Olumidi Akwata, who was a contender for the ticket, of not calling his men to order. Mr. Rababi promised to report the attack on the leaders of the group to security agents. But still staying in Edo State, particularly in the Labour Party, ahead of the 2024 governorship election in the state, Mr. Olumidi Abata, governorship aspirant, says he has not stepped down from the race, as according to the publicity secretary of the party, uh, Mr. Samoroba. In a statement, described Mr. Abata as one of the contenders for the party ticket and that he has no encumbrances. The party spokesman asks the aspirant and his supporters to ignore reports on social media stating that the Labour Party has asked the former president of the NBA, the Nigerian Bar Association, to stay off the governorship race. Let's now turn our attention to the situation in Plateau State. But less than a week after that attack, in, on some communities in Bokus and Barkin Ladi, local government areas of the state. Another community, Badel, in Bokus local government area, has been attacked by bandits. The chairman of Bokus local government council transition implementation committee, Mr. Monday Kasa, told Channels Television that the attack, which happened late last night, did not record any casualty due to the timely response from security personnel. According to him, security agencies responded to the distress call, but on getting to the community, several houses had been burned. Now, the local government chairman explains further that the number of deaths from the previous attack remain at 195. Meanwhile, the Plateau State Commissioner for Information and Communication, Mr. Musa Ashims, confirms this death toll as well, but adds that more bodies were recovered in the bushes, while about 36 survivors are receiving treatment for injuries they sustained during the attacks. Governor Caleb Mutfang has been visiting the victims at the hospital, some of whom include children and the elderly. Let's go over to neighbor in Taraba State, where the senator representing the southern zone of the state, Sir David Jim, Jim Kutter, is raising an alarm over what he describes as an impending famine in the country. And that's due to what he describes as the alarming rate of killings of farmers by bandits. Well, according to Senator Jim Kutter, more than 700 of his constituents from Yangtu Special Development Area, Nusa, and Takum local government areas of the state have been killed by bandits within the last three months. He's calling on the federal government to urgently declare a state of emergency in communities which are affected by bandits to put an end to the escalating crisis. From security report, more than 700 people have been killed in those areas. 700. Those are the ones, this is from security. 700. So you know something that you worry? People have left their farms, they are, they are taking shelter in the primary school. Okay, now, if school resume, where are the students going to sit and learn? So, it's something that we need to double our effort. In fact, may that also the federal government and the state government also declare state of emergency on security. Declare state of emergency is needed. Because every effort without security, it will be in vain. I pray that they hack into this 
our call. And uh, my fear is we are heading to full scarcity. And once we allow that to persist in no distant time, Nigeria will run into full scarcity. And that will be a big problem to everybody. Secondly, it's our responsibility to secure the life and property of our people. It is our responsibility. So I'm calling on the security agencies to do more. We appreciate their presence. We appreciate what they're doing. You can see some of my complaints. I see sometimes they get there after the attack. They should be prompt, number one. Number two, I requested that they should carry a special operation in those our mountains and our forests to flush out those bandits or criminals or whatever, whether non-state actors. Well, staying in the state, an attack by gunmen suspected to, the, to be bandits has also left eight people dead in Fikyu, Bambo and uh, Bambo Puri communities in Osa local government area of state. The member representing Osa state constituency at the state assembly, Rikupi Joshua, who confirmed the attack, raised concerns over the killings of members of his constituency. He is calling on the federal government to deploy troops to the troubled areas to save the affected farming community. Mr. Joshua had formally raised an alarm over bandits' attack from the Republic of Cameroon. So let's get more on the situation. We're joined by uh, Honorable Rikupi Joshua, who raised that alarm. Uh, he's a Taraba Assembly member representing us, a constituency. He joins us virtually on the program uh, this afternoon. Thank you for joining us, uh, Honorable. Very sad story coming out uh, from your constituency and appears in other parts of Taraba State as well. Uh, can you just give us a background as to that attack? Uh, what exactly happened and particularly what is being done uh, by other security agencies? Have there been arrests made? Good, good afternoon. Um, Honorable, if you could just turn off uh, whatever device, maybe your television that you're using to listen to me elsewhere, and just uh, let's use the uh, Zoom application for the conversation. But I was basically asking, I imagine you got my question, uh, the background to that attack, and what is being done by security agencies? Well, um, since the crisis uh, started some years ago, uh, the security have been trying their best, especially uh, the present uh, government by His Excellency Dr. Kefas Sabu. Uh, since his mission in office, he has really tried, but more needs to be done. Um, the security presence actually is, uh, is not much felt as expected. More should still be done to, to, to give confidence to the people that indeed there is a presence of government in the local government. You know, this is coming at a time we're still grappling with those attacks on the plateau. And the one fact that jumps up immediately is plateau and Taraba are neighboring states. Uh, is there maybe a trend that we're seeing here? Is there some sort of link? Uh, because clearly it's happening in Plateau State, also happening in Taraba. And I recall a senator raising the alarm. You had raised the alarm as well that hundreds of people have been killed in the past few months. Is this a trend that we're seeing? What exactly is at play here, Honorable? Hi, this, the voice is not too clear. I can hear you very well. Well, I can hear you. My question is the fact that 
Plateau and Taraba are neighboring states. So I'm asking, is there a trend we're seeing? 195 killed on the plateau. Over the past few months in Taraba, hundreds of people have been killed. You raised the alarm. The senator who spoke earlier also raised the alarm. Yeah, um, last week, uh, I raised an alarm about the killing, the killings in the constituency. Uh, there was a press conference, and I spoke specifically to the area that were being attacked presently. I said the Pambo, Fichu, Pambo Yashi, uh, Pambo Puri, as is, is a target for these bandits. And I said more securities should be mobilized immediately to this area to prevent a further attack. As of that time, about three people were killed between Fikyu and Pambo uh, Yashi. And the particular, this particular community, Pambo Yashi, has been deserted because of the frequent attack. And I, and I said, let there be more security present, especially in Fikyu, Pambo, and Pambo Yashi, and Pambo Pri. Right. And surprisingly, uh, thereafter, there was no much action taken by the security agent till two days ago uh, that uh, about eight people lost their life in that particular spot that I raised an early alarm to the security, which uh, uh, the, 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 the commissioner of police uh, also confirms that, and he said he's going to mobilize uh, more of his men to that particular uh, community. But right. very unfortunately, uh, there was no presence of security there until two days ago when about eight people were murdered in their cold blood. Oh dear. Well, uh, Honorable, just a moment. I'll come back to you, but let's expand the conversation. We've since been joined by Dr. Kabir Adamu, who is a National Security Policy and Strategy Consultant, Managing Director, Beacon Consultant, also joining us uh, virtually on the program this uh, afternoon from the nation's capital. Thank you uh, for joining us, uh, Dr. Adamu. I, I know you've been uh, following this trend, particularly the recent ones, the killings we saw on the plateau I mean, it appears to be even brazen because last night, yet another community uh, was attacked. Thankfully, no life was lost, but houses were burned. And now we're talking Taraba State as well. Both states share border. They have vast land mass, but then they're predominantly farmers. So I'd like to just get your thoughts. Uh, do you see a link? Is there a trend in, I mean, the attack we're seeing on the plateau and in Taraba State. Uh, what do you make of this? Okay, um, thank you very much. Even though the audio was a little bit distorted, but I think I got the uh, major uh, point of your question. Um, unfortunately, it's not just Plateau State and Taraba State. Um, from our records, uh, as you know, I run a consultancy. We keep a database of security incidents. We know that between the 20 thought and the 25th of December, at least 300 Nigerians were killed across the three major regions of the country. The Northeast, um, so there were attacks in Borno State. There were attacks, like you rightly said, in, in Taraba State. There were attacks in, in Yobi State as well. And then when you come to North Central, Plateau State, Kaduna State too, uh, recorded um, some incidents. Then, of course, in the Northwest, Kasina, Zamfara, and Sokoto State recorded um, incidents. And in all of this, there is one single trend, which is the failure of the security agencies to prevent those attacks. Now that is on the one hand, um, I don't want to make means my word, it is a failure. On the other hand, despite that failure, even after the incident, there is also a failure to arrest the perpetrators. So two failures, unfortunately. And at the center of all of this, is the social contract, which um, compels government um, as, as a provision of section 14, subsection two of our constitution that says they must provide security to lives and property within the country. And unfortunately, these incidents continue to deplete that provision of our constitution. Now with, with direct reference to your question, 
whether there is um, some similarities between the plateau and Taraba State. Yes, there are geographical similar similarities. The terrain um, is one that that allows um, whoever is behind this, this this attack to hide. The unfortunate environmental factors that exist, um, the grievances within communities that is being exploited. Then there is also a political dimension, especially in Plateau State, that is all, that is also allowing that. Um, without because so that to summarize what I'm trying to say, there have been several commissions of inquiries and committees that have looked into the crisis in Plateau State. I can't remember in the past when at at one point a white paper was released for those commissions of inquiry. Now, despite that. I'm not aware that the recommendations of those commissions of inquiry have been implemented. The most popular one is the Nikitobi um, co committee that looked into the crisis in Plateau State. Till date, almost I think um, 13 years after or thereabout, we haven't seen the implementation of the recommendations of that. So there is a clear um, failure of the political class to take ownership and be accountable for what is happening across both states. Well, Dr. Adamu, quite a number of issues you have raised, but it's still at the table of security agencies. And I imagine it flows from the very top national security advisor, uh, the IG, the service chiefs, and, and, and all of the rest. But speak to us also about the motive. So we've identified what has been described as failings on the path of security agencies. But for the attackers, what is the motive? Because I know that's a question a lot of people have asked, and I wonder if you have some insight into it. It's even said that another letter has been written to a community that they should expect attacks today still on the plateau. So it speaks to how brazen this is, but more importantly, what is the motive? Uh, what is it to grab land? Well, is it what, um, what exactly do you think is at play here? You know, um, first off, uh, I'm, I'm a private player, and yes, I do have. Um, sources uh, that give me an insight into security development. Now, the, the, there are certain tr trends that have emerged that will give us an indication of what the motive is. And I can tell you, when you gather all of it together, there is one issue that emerges, which is resource. There is a competition for resources, and that competition, unfortunately, is driving the conflict. But it is not enough. Um, so that's that's a possible motive. Only an investigation uh, would determine whether that is um, the, the, the correct motive. What are the other factors that are driving this resource-based conflict? And I don't want the simplistic explanation that it is land. No, I, I, I partly grew up in Plateau State, and I knew the harder communities and the farming community coexisted. And it is simplistic to think that there are no harders within the farming communities or that there are no farmers within the hardened communities. It is extremely simplistic, and it is wrong. Um, so it is resource-based, but not as it's simply projected that it is about land acquisition or land grabbing. It's a little bit more than, more than that. Um, pol politics has crept into it. And I must say with all sense of responsibility, the, fe the February and March elections did not help matters. There was a lot of negative mobilization um, along ethnic and along um, religious lines. We did caution at that time that whoever wins would have to live with the consequences of that negative mobilization. And unfortunately, we've been proven right. The third issue is the issue of proliferation of small arms and light weapons. The nature of conflict that we're seeing and the, bar the barbaric violence that is being meted out would never be possible if there were no small arms and light weapons in the hands of the perpetrators. Um, the fourth one, which I've spoken about, is the failure of the security agencies to prevent all of that. There is also a, a, a conspiracy theory that is suggesting perhaps there is some level of involvement um, you know, by certain elements within um, the political and perhaps even the security class. It's a conspiracy theory, and I, I do not necessarily believe it, but why I brought it up is that it is adding to the nature of the, of the conflict. The trust mm -hmm. deficit between the people and the security agencies is fastly being de depleted by that conspiracy theory. And then, of course, the last one is the um, administ the justice system, both the right. traditional justice system and then the criminal justice system that is failing to arrest 
and punish offenders irrespective of their identity, their political affiliation, or and other um, sentimentalities. So five um, points last you have raised. Uh, let me take this to uh, Honorable Joshua, because I know he also spoke about security, saying enough is not being done uh, in that area. And I wonder if there's some sort of early warning system, if there's a, a structure that is in place so communities can reach out to, I don't know, whoever is in charge in that area who can then escalate it. I wonder if there is something of that nature already in place. If there is, let us know. If there's, there isn't, perhaps that's something to explore. But I'd like to also speak to the point uh, Dr. Adamu raised. So he, for him, he says that this is essentially resource-based, saying that this is for land grabbing is simplistic for him. He also talked about uh, the role of politics, that politics escalated this. You're a politician. And of course, I imagine you can speak to that as well. So uh, do you agree with him on those fronts that this is simply resource based, not just land grabbing, that is simplistic and that politicians uh, are largely responsible for this because of the negative mobilization for the election? Um, actually, the audio is very poor here. I can't uh, really decode what you have, you have said. I don't know if something can be done for me to hear you clearly and hear you. Well, I'm just going to repeat myself, hoping that you will hear better. I do hope you can hear me now, Honorable Joshua. Hello? Uh, can you hear me better now? You might want to increase the volume on your device. Perhaps that's where the issue is. Okay, I can hear you a little bit clearer now. Okay, I'm asking if you agree with uh, Dr. Adamu on those points he raised. First, that this is resource based, that the crisis is essentially uh, because of resources, not just land grabbing, that that is simplistic. And then he says there's a lot of politics, or this is as a result of the politics that played out earlier in the year. You're a politician. Do you also agree with that? Uh, it looks like Honorable Joshua didn't catch that. Uh, perhaps we'll try to... I'm sorry? I'm coming. Wow. All right. Uh, let me come back to you, Dr. Adamu. Uh, looks like we have yes, difficulty. I can hear you now. Well, uh, okay, uh, please go we ahead. cannot actually... To me, I think uh, I didn't really understand what the... Can you hear me now, please? I yes, can let's hear go you ahead. now. Let's go ahead. Hello? Uh, you can go ahead now, Honorable. I can hear you. The, the situation in Osa... Uh, the situation in Osa is... Uh, I. If I've sat down and I look at it uh, properly, to actually want to know what actually the bandits want, because uh, if it is the issue of um, the hiders and the farmers, uh, I think we have reached a peace uh, agreement. There was a committee that was set up, and uh, both both the two parties, the the, 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 the leaders of the various communities, that is the Flani hiders and the farmers, who are able to meet and they have taken decision that they want to stay together and there should be peace. And, uh, and uh, uh, I could remember uh, sometimes August this year, first, first of August, a report was submitted to, to the government that uh, they have agreed that the hiders should leave the land for farming activities to start to, to drive. And that if there is any hiders found in the, any community in Osa, it, it should be designated as a, as a bandit or a terrorist. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, I, I, much has not been done by the government to ensure that the, the, the report of the committee is actually taken into consideration. So uh, I believe that the government needs to actually look into it. The, 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 the committee have done their best, have done their recommendations. So it is left for the government to take the necessary action to see that these bandits are wiped out of our land. Since they say any hider they see in the land is a, is a terrorist. 
It is this one is all agreed, even the, the, the Mieta Ala, that committee. So I think the government needs to be decisive about this. Uh, let's keep politics, uh, whatever it is. It, it is possible that politics may be there as well, but lives of uh, the people is our primary, primary responsibility uh, to, 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 to be taken into consideration. Well, uh, again, you have raised some issues which will, of course, be following uh, in the coming days. We'd like to thank you so much, uh, Honorable Kupi Joshua. Glad we were able to at least get some of your responses uh, before the close of the program, as well as Dr. Kabiru Adamu, National Security Policy and Strategy Consultant, MDB Consultant. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for taking time out of the Yule time. Thank you for us. having us. Right. Let's tell you that uh, President Bola Tinubu is making a promise uh, that the 2024 appropriation bill will be ready soon and will display his administration's focus on reversing the infrastructural decay in the country through financial reengineering. Uh, he was speaking when he hosted the National Working Committee of his party, the APC, where he also asked them to ensure that women and youth are recruited in its e-registration and digital membership validation schedule to be completed first quarter of next year. And then you see some men attacking uh, members of the Lamidi Abapa Labour Party group. They went to the state uh, ahead of tomorrow's Congress, which is meant to be organized by the Lamidi Abapa Labour Party group. They see the men being attacked and even filmed uh, by these group of attackers. The spokesperson of the Abapa led faction of Labour Party is accusing the Edo State uh, Public Secretary, Mr. Samaruba, of spearheading the attack. He alleges that the leaders were beaten up and malhandled when they went to prepare for the event. He's also accusing the governorship aspirant of the party, Mr. Olumide Abata, of not calling his men to order. He says that this incident will be reported uh, to security agencies and will be followed up. Well, politics should never be violent. Well, that's where we end the show for today. Thank you for watching. I'm Kairi Okikilu. Goodbye.